Hello friends and welcome to my channel Funk Science Class and I would like to request you to subscribe to learn more about science. So today we'll talk about the one of the interesting findings of the 21st century and one of them is this material named perovskite and, and it has a wide applications in making solar cells are commonly known as photovoltaics. And you can you'll see after some time why which type of materials and why it is used in making solar cells. So uh, the main motive of behind uh, this uh, research or this kind of work is that we know that in our earth one of the most abundant uh, sources of energy is the solar energy and if we can make a technology or if we can make a device which can harvest this energy with much greater efficiency then we can make our earth look beautiful and simpler so to think about this is like uh, in the recent year we can see that the population is increasing at the same time the requirement of energy per individual is also increasing we use cell phones we use laptops and we use more amount of electricity so the the energy needs to satisfy uh, has to be overcome from the research newer kind of research with much efficient and much cheaper technologies so this is one of the promising material which has its wide applications and it's simpler in device engineering and device architecture. So it's a dream project for the most of the scientists around the world to make it, it commercialize. We know the basics of the solar cell from our um, basic science that solar cell is a combination of P-type and N-type semiconductor. And this p-type and n-type semiconductor when it comes close in contact with each other at the interface there is a uh, there is a creation there is a development of what is called the potential gradient and this gradient is the driving force behind the separation of the charge that you collect and the semiconductor has this what is called the separation between the valence band and the conduction band you know the valence band is the filled band at zero degree Celsius and the conduction band is the empty band at the zero degree Celsius and when, when, when this material absorbs light, the electron gets excited from the valence band to the conduction band. And, and as a result of which the hole is created at the valence band and the electron is um, present at the conduction band. And these electrons in the conduction band are mobile and they move around to create an electricity. And this electricity can, we can use to, for various applications. So the major components or the major parts of this kind of devices you need is the one is the light absorb. So when incident photon comes and hits the surface, it, there has to be creation of electrons and holes. And another thing is the carrier collector. Carrier collector are basically um, those kind of material which has very high affinity for electrons and very high affinity for holes. And the, the material which has high affinity for electron collects electrons and the material which has high affinity for the holes collect the holes and last thing you need is the metal contacts these are just the conductor that connects the external circuit and the various classes of solar cells till date has been uh, has been classified as the first generation solar cell which are totally silicon based technologies these are uh, monocrystalline and the polycrystalline and the second generation is based on the thin flame technologies uh, which are of amorphous silicon cells and the compound semiconductor cells and the, the newer technologies which which the entire research focuses on is bringing out the cheaper technologies like the organic photovoltaics dye sensitized solar cell uh, the quantum dots hybrid solar cell and and in this particular category our new material that's perovskite based solar cell comes in so we'll explore more about this perovskite solar cell this is the in interesting plot which is maintained by the national renewable energy lab and you can see the efficiencies of various solar cell from the right from their discovery to till date but the important thing we look about is this material perovskite this is the material which has just uh, started its research at 2009 by professor miyasaka and today it has reached the efficiency of about 22.3 and it's increasing day by day you don't know how much number of papers are coming and the research are so competitive these days so by a span of about 8 to 10 years it has increased by a 20 percent this is um, this is one of the historic um, 
achievements uh, in the field of solar cell uh, so this also has a direct impact that this material is a potent molecule for making this kind of devices so the reason behind this uh, high increase in uh, the efficiency is because it has a very good optical absorption that means it can absorb the solar energy with much better efficiency and people have realized this and they started working more and more about this this material you will see how how this molecule discovered and the perovskite was first uh, discovered uh, in 1839 by one of the scientists named Gustav Rose and it was of a crystal structure similar to that of the calcium titanium oxide and it in general it's known as abx3 you can see in the first structure that um, it's a cubic structure at the body center there is an octahedral unit of a and x so a is surrounded by the six x units and you can see the equivalent structure as like cube and those cube is surrounded by the uh, octahedra corners and b uh, is at the body center but the uh, promising materials which is used in making solar cell is this organic inorganic hybrid perovskite so in organic inorganic hybrid perovskite the a is um, an organic cation uh, like methyl ammonium cation b is inorganic cation like lead or tin which has to be in plus 2 oxidation state and x is the slightly smaller halide like iodine bromine and chlorine and uh, it is arranged in the similar way like this the and the uh, the lead and the uh, halide units are have octahedral units which are in the corner and the organic cation is at the body centered and the making of this kind of uh, material is the solution process what we call there are two kind of uh, simplest technique we'll ta I'll talk about the simplest technique on one is this one step spin coating and another is the two step spin coating uh, what what we can do is we we mix this uh, compound methyl ammonium iodide and the lead iodide in the uh, organic solvent like dimethyl acetamide and we we put uh, this in a spin coating devices uh, and you rotate about 3000 rpm and you'll get a thin flame of the brown colored uh, this perovskite material you can do it with through two step spin coating also you add first of all you add the uh, lead iodide in titanium oxide uh, solution and then further you uh, you add methyl ammonium iodide in that solution and you'll also get the same kind of brown coating so these are the two methods of making this kind of material it's very easy to make uh, actually it's very easy to make as compared to other uh, technologies like the silicon and other materials so that's why it has been remarkable in uh, in the solar industries and the only challenge that this device this this material is showing is that the stability you know the silicon stability silicon why silicon is the important in solar energy is because it has very good stability it can it it it, it works for about two years three years and more but this device is even a few minutes it started degrading uh, when it's exposed to humidity oxygen uv radiation and temperature because what happens is that the, uh, I showed in the previous structure that crystal structure at the body center is the methyl ammonium cation. Uh, whenever, whenever it is exposed to a temperature, what happens is that uh, this the body centered, this body centered this methyl ammonium cation this comes out of the crystal. Uh, so as a result of which the stability of the devices decreases. So we can vary those substituents and and make the device more uh, make this material more stable so the, this is one of the challenges for the scientist to vary its constituent and somehow make that uh, material stable under various conditions and number two is the toxicity of lead it has been scientifically um, shown that lead is a toxic to the microorganisms and and other things so there might be chances of replacing lead by some other uh, metals which is non-toxic in nature so this is one of the important uh, molecule and we'll see in future much more about this kind of technology so thank you for watching